Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. If you're if you're just joining us watching, Legacy have started to put on their performance to try and get a reverse sweep against Sin, who picked up the first two games of this best of five series, but it's been a nail biter in the last two games. Also, where the bloody hell have you been for the last three hours <laughs> if you're just tuning in? Because this has been an absolute barn burner. I mean, we're going to game four again. Look like Sin was gonna be able to close that one out, Fish. They took down both of spoiler alert, both base turrets. <laughs> <laughs> Nearly we're on the Nexus, but that man on your screen comes up huge. Oh. Sin were on the Nexus and come and somehow able to take two people down all by himself. While the rest of Sin were looking to try and destroy the base as fast as possible. Probably was the wrong call there from the team, but eventually Legacy able to pick up the win in that match. Another 60 minute slugfest. I mean, Juice was saying that his match against the Chiefs is going to be the match of the century. He didn't tell me it's going to be the gauntlet of the century as well. I mean, if they pick Legacy up on this game, 3-1 against, against Legacy mm. is a very respectable score for it Sin. Is. They go into the final then with a head full of steam, and they've recognized, you know, Oriana sucks to play against late game. <laughs> Let's just get rid of her. I think Sin just recognizes it sucks to play against Oriana as Sin in general. It has not paid off for them so far. Ooh. Oh, Tally's picked up the Fizz! My goodness! Flares, what do you have to do against that? I mean, honestly, I don't know. We've seen so little responses to the Fizz. Gragas seems to be the only one I have off the top of my head, but he takes the skill matchup. He's going for the Crocodile himself. Does Flares know this champion enough to be able to take him on? Sin have also locked in Malzahar as their support of choice with Thresh, with Zyra banned out. Rogue is saying, I'm not going back to Karma. Give me something I can flash forward and kill people with. It was actually crucial to their game one victory against the Chiefs, I believe. My goodness, we have another Fizz game spot. It's not even game five. We didn't deserve this. Yeah, I know. Fizz has been so dominant in the gauntlet so far. We'll see whether that trend continues because normally it's been on flares. See whether he has the answer for it. Harmon now going to be locking in Victor. There's a champion to pick up for Claire. Claire's a really good Victor player, by the way. I actually really enjoy watching his Victor. Uh, I think that he controls the pace of the game really well on it. And if they're able to pick up the Ash, I mean, this is a lot of the strength taken away from Sin in their yeah. composition. There's a lot of Sin's picks being picked up by Legacy. Surprised that they decided to first pick the Rannington heading into this match, knowing that it's not going to be picked up by Legacy unless yeah. they throw Fizz mid. I don't really think it was going to be banned away either. Because mm. as far as scaling goes, as well as early laning phase, you feel like uh, Fizz has it. Ooh, and Juves has picked up Gragas head into the jungle. I feel like this is going to be another cheese play. I feel like kill the fizz early. Juves is going to topside kill the Fizz. <laughs> and look at him. He's got a grin of an evil genius. He's ready. Get me up there, boys. You want some fish dinner for dinner? Thank God it's not me. So Lulu is banned out as the first band during their second band rotation. Makes a lot of sense. One of the biggest counters to Melzahar. Mm -hmm. Able to polymorph as well as kill out the Voiling very easily. Back when Melzahar was the first pickle band support, people were picking up Lulu to try and counter him. and said it was a soft counter and did well, did well into the lane. And then suddenly Lulu was like, oh, this is the best support pick. <laughs> Screw yeah. you, Mazaha. W Max came out of nowhere. Hmm. The critter duration is just obnoxious in the landing phase as well as the increased movement speed. Because we used to see Lulu's support being used with Pact Kongmo a lot in Korea, then yep. research popular. But it used to be three to points lane. into Q and then Max E as yeah. a support. You used to legitimately Max W last. And now W is like a stun that lasts forever. Yeah. You just don't want that. Uh, AD carry pinch coming out from Legacy though. Varus and Ezreal being banned out with Graves and Lulu being banned out by Sin. Oh, and now what AD carry do you pick up? I mean, there is Caitlyn available for FBI. I think that's what he does go towards. Caitlyn does synergize Lucian. with Malzar's ultimate. Lucian is available. Jin, that would be a throwback. Mm. And he does lock it in. So Sin, FBI, this was the champion he was known for. He's picking up, heading into this fourth match against Legacy. Yeah, so we're gonna see whether the old school matchup of Jin versus Ash still goes in Ash's favor. Sneaking suspicion that ever since the nerfs to everything Jin value dearly as well as lethality means that it does fish. Potentially. Legacy now have to show their hands. Does come and go back to Lee Sin in the jungle. It seems like it will be his pick of choice. Lee Sin is one of those champions that if you've just been playing Lee Sin and you're feeling comfortable, just keep playing Lee Sin. Because he has a really unique play style. He has really unique parts of the game where he's strong and weak and how you're supposed to look for flanks on him. 
I mean, if you're in the lease in mindset, there's no reason to change it. Mm -hmm. The final pick for Legacy will be their top laner and no. Trundle. Whoa, support. What? Top lane. Cupcake has locked in Trundle support. What? You need to calm down, sir. That is a support Trundle. What the heck's going on? Being taken onto Summoner's Rift. And Ryan with throwing the gauntlet picks up Zed heading into mid lane. I no, under no longer understand this game. <laughs> <laughs> Neither do I. That's interesting. But we're going to find out. Of course, Trundle, very popular support. Last year, he was. when melees were running around, the likes of Tom Kench, the likes of Alistar and Braum, Pillar is a very useful tool. Um, and you can see Soul Strikes is really barking out orders. I feel like this is something they didn't necessarily want to show, but with a pinch onto the supports, they've taken away Braum, they've taken away Lulu. Mm. Zyra, Karma, that's not even a pinch actually. Nami, Karma, both available. This is just a choice. I mean, does it do well into Sin's team comp? They've got a front to back comp with the Assassin. I mean, they've got a really strong 1-3-1 is what they have. Do you put the ultimate down to Jews and Flares and say, Tally, go to town with Fizz? Potentially. Potentially. FBI has picked up Jin here, which is another throwback. And Ryoma's happy to take on the Control Mage with an Assassin. I mean, Ryoma just likes playing Assassins, and we've already talked about it at length on the Analyst Desk. But when Melzahar is on the other team, it becomes nearly impossible to do that. Mm -hmm. So they pick up the Melzahar first, they get the... Uh, Zed floor it afterwards. Uh, Zed isn't really my preferred assassin at the moment. I think <laughs> Talon kind of does everything he does a little bit better. But at the same time, I mean, if Ryan is confident on it, if that is the one that he wants to go towards, you have to trust in your players. And he's been having a pretty good series so far. He is against Connor's Victor. This is the first champion that we saw Claire really perform well yep. in the OPL. Uh, he had a couple of Jace games that were pretty phenomenal, yeah. actually. But yeah, that was the game against the Chiefs where Legacy mm -hmm. were able to pick up the 2-0. And Claire, yeah, went back towards it and was really able to put in some work. So I agree. He's a very good Victor player. Has a similar play style to Oriana as well. That's one of the things that you do like to see. It crosses over. I'm excited to watch Fizz though. It's no longer going to be Flares that picks up yep. the champion. It'll be Tally that's playing Fizz in the top side of the map. And every single Fizz game we've seen, whoo you just wish you never saw it. And I am just interesting, uh, interested to see whether it's Fizz or whether it's Flares. That's a big question for me right now because if Juice gets into that lane early, picks up a double kill onto that cute little bunny rabbit, then you can confidently say it's Flares. However, if Tally pops off, I don't think we're going to see Fizz this at all cute. in the Gauntlet run. This is very cute from Legacy, trying to catch out Flares. Pops a ward down. Does he get it? Oh, oh. Very close, Tally. Better luck next time. No gold for you. And this is why I don't wear glasses when I shout cast. <laughs> I gave in to the popular masses and I'm starting to get a banger of a headache. Oh, come on. You're only just doing it because it's just need me. <laughs> <laughs> They're the two most vocal about your glasses. Yeah, I would actually be scared to not wear glasses on broadcast around Yish. <laughs> Legacy were trying to see if they could catch out Renix on the top side of the map, but... Nothing happens there. Bottom side, though, Malzahar has priority in lane. We don't see leashing from uh, AD carrying supports anymore. Just going to be top side of map. Grang what is stunting. Cupcake actually doing this lane? I mean, that's what I'm interested what in. What Cupcake does? Yeah. Bites Voidlings. <laughs> Potentially. <laughs> I, I guess mean, he noms Voidlings. Yeah, in. he has an auto attack reset. Look how much health he has, though. For goodness sake. He's got 802. <laughs> Brom would be proud. I think Brom starts at like 8-12. Yeah. Take, right, take the right runes and masteries. He's also fairly resilient to harass. You can see he doesn't take much damage there. And when minions die around him, he gets back a chunk of health. So if he can draw some harass away from Lost, he'll be fine. And Lost has actually gone for a Doran's Blade start. So they're very confident in the slain spawn. Yeah, very aggressive start wow. there. And you can see that a lot of harass going down already. We actually see Fervor of Battle on Jin. Hmm. That's a new one. What? Over, over Death Fire Touch, we did get nerfed, nerf, but it still feels like the right choice. I mean, Cup Oh, even Thunderlord seems like a better choice than that. Cupcake's not taking any damage. Now down to half health, finally using his first potion. It just seems like they've been whaling away at him. Here we go. There's a pillar, there's an exhaust early, but Rogue responds with his own. Now they're going to hit level two. FBI does not connect with the W. Seems like going for a cheesy play as Tally takes so much damage. Oh! She's almost dead. Flares gets first blood in the top lane. Take that, you fizz monster. And all of a sudden, the answer is clear. It is just Flares in the top lane at the moment. It's not about the fizz. It's just about that man on your screen. Absolutely huge play.
1v1 takes down arguably what people consider to be the best top lane in the OPL on arguably the best champion to play top lane one-on-one -on -one at the moment. What the heck? And I mean, I said that it was the meta thing that it looks like Tally isn't actually clicking at his usual performance. He's had some good tank games, but not really carrying. However, it doesn't seem to be a meta thing right now because he's got a carry and it's into a carry matchup and he still loses out. Carbon is top side of the map here. Fizz will slowly get back up. So Tally refusing he can to wait teleport. Around. Technically can wait around if he wanted to, Carbon, and look for a gank. But I always say, you know, give me that many creeps <laughs> over a jungler. <laughs> I mean, if you told me my jungler was Jews, I would disagree. That guy's a monster at the moment when he ganks top lane. <laughs> no. <Nah>. 100% give <laughs> me the creeps. No disrespect to Jews. <laughs> Final side of the map, FBI and Rogue are sl slowly starting to push in. It really just seems like this lane for Cupcake and Lost was we level hit level two, two all in. All in. All right, now we just go back to farming. But Rogue did a good job. Oh, really oh. nice pillar. FBI flashed away, still very slow. Carbon's coming in. That's a flash forward from Lost. Rogue. Oh, Carbon hit a creep. I was going to say, Rogue was trying to tank up the Q, but he doesn't even have to. FBI will be flashed on. All the summoner spells are being burned, and Rome is coming down. Yeah, so really nicely played there. Actually, out of Legacy, they're going to be able to get Ooh. a big CS advantage, Ooh. although now the Camp is Hello, really starting. There's an ignite onto flares. He's in a bit of trouble. Juice, body bop. Yes, gets it. Can he flash oh. out? Juice, you made a mistake, buddy. Flash, flash away first, from that. Juice. Flash first. All of a sudden, you've given a much needed kill over to Tally, and he still does have teleport available. Ooh. But 15 CS lead for flares, and he's two levels up over this fizz. Yeah, and you can see Tally now has to burn it. He's coming back with a really poor shop, and flares is going to come back with pretty much, like, what, phage? Can he go higher than that? Oh, poor top lane. Such a huge disadvantage. Hex Drinker already for Ooh, a Hex Drinker. Nice and early. So yeah. going through a little bit of defense. That makes sense. Still aggressive. Still gives him damage, which is good to have. But that shield just ruins Fizz's day. Uh, second time in a couple of uh, days, Ryama has fallen down pretty far in lane. This is not going to be the... like. 30 CS to 8 that Swiffer had on him with the Oriata <laughs> in this matchup. But, uh, oh, was he playing Oriata or, or Talia? Talia. Talia, it was. Standing on, yeah, pretty much the ranged minions just chucking rocks at him. But don't you expect to fall behind 10 to 15 on Zed at least? Yeah, potentially. I mean, Zed also wins against a couple uh -oh. of control majors. Here comes Juice. In. Does he body slam flash? Uh, there's the gravity field. Oh, he Ooh. missed. He should have hit that. And he's now going to take some harassment. No, he's he all right. should have hit that one. He should have hit that without flash available. Uh, it should have been a summoner spell being burned out of Claire. But at least it buys a respite. Oh, 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 oh. Level 6 Roma. There is Carbon here, though. Dodges out Sonic Wave and, you know, can't chase him anymore. <laughs> what a play out of Roma. Fancy feet. Once again, that probably should have been a burnt flash. But Jungle is just not able to hit skill shot. I feel like Juice was trying to predict the dash backwards from Claire, but he just walked in a straight line. Meanwhile, Flair's going to town Tally. That's a good dash. You gotta be careful though. There's a hex trick. A level six Dominus, come back here, you little cotton tailed piece of thing. So he's piece gonna chase thing. it down. <laughs> piece of thing, that's what you come up with. We've turned not to swear on Roka. <laughs> 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 Had to hold my tongue back somehow. Come on, man. You just, just gotta to embrace the rogue. That's how we do it on the OPL at the moment. Yeah, don't like getting screamed at after the Roka. So. That's a couple of solo <laughs> kills. That's a couple of solo kills. I do wanna also point out to viewers that we did not scream at Rogue for swearing on broadcast. That is a. <laughs> That is not true. I don't know. <laughs> well, I'm telling you right now. Uh, but yeah, really nicely done out of flares. Uh, good guy at FBI gives Rogue a cannon creep there. Loss is going to be able to take the blast current out as well. Um, this bottom lane, Loss is about 10 CS up. So it's doing all right. But is that just Jin not being as strong as he was? Yeah, I, I honestly think that the Jin pick is bemusing, especially. Oh, 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 Ryamax is going in. There's a gravity field as well. Pops the ultimate on the last tick with the ignite. Now Juice comes in with the body bob, gets the kill as well. Yeah, so Juice able to clean up that kill. Probably didn't need it, although heal was still available. So better safe than sorry. I think that the death mark as well as the ignite probably would have cleaned him up. Carbon, like any good jungler will, sniffs out. A full wave of creeps a mile away and arrives just in time, not to help his mid laner, but to pick up the CS. Carbon hasn't had much impact in this Ooh. game. Top sides where it's at two levels for flares. Kindle gem picked up as well. He's nice and healthy. Tally's sitting on the variety bucket of builds. <laughs> That's one Q. He's already popping a corrupting potion. It's level six, so he does have fish available and he has ignite, so there is a small window where no dominance. 
Oh, as soon as Rennington Center is half his rage bar, you can't step up to him. Why is doing a good job of maintaining the rage bar as well? And you can see that means that the ultimate's going to be back available. With Flash and Teleport off. Going down to take down this guy, though. That's quick. Ooh. That's a Scuttle Crab that hasn't died yet this game. That was quick. Now Tally potentially has a jump. Does Fish come out? What? No. Just He's gonna... level 6 and Flares has gotten in behind him. Dominus is available. Jumps in. Slice. Good stun. Ooh, great trade from players. Certainly is. I mean, that's a lot of health gone until he didn't have a chance to play full Trickster there at all. Still has two. Oh, he's got to be careful. There is an Ash and a Trundle right behind him with Carbon sitting in the wings. Flares he has to sniff play it a mile away, though. You can tell that the recall for bottom lane was due, and it's not here. On Arrow's the way, Pink's come coming. Oh, lost his level five. It's difficult. There is the fierce slice. Does have dice as well as Flash. There's the arrow now. Level 6 it does get popped. They're jumping on top of the crocodile. Exhaust being used as well. He heals up so much, but four members of Legacy is just too much. Yeah, exactly right. So in the end, they're able to take him down. Carbon picks up that kill. They use, what, three summoner spells and two ultimates in the end to pick him up. But a kill is still a kill. And now positioning for this top lane turret. Oh, no. However, rotation already here. Juves is in the back. Ooh, oh, FBI. Oh, they're jumping FBI. He's kicked back. Rogue flashes over. Only locks down Lost, but he's not taking up the turret. And they split the team. Lost going to go down to Rogue. But Carver's in the back lines again. Will he fall to the turret? Yes, he will. Malefic Visions gets a double for him. And Ryoma's hunting. In comes hunting. Ryoma. There's the ultimate. Tally going to take a lot of damage. Flash forward for Ryoma. Cupcake will live to tell the tale. But still, messy trades top side of the map. Three for three in the end, I think it is. Flair went down for three members. So really nice job from Sin there. They actually wrestled back control of a bit of a gold lead. And now they're sending Flares down for a massive creep wave in the bottom. Jubes is going to stick around, make sure top lane hit turret. Rhymer's ahead in CS in the mid lane now. Yeah, out of nowhere. Claire. Has really good kill threat as well. I mean, he did pick up that kill with the help of Jubes. He did. But the control mage now is going to have such a tough time. You have to farm from distance. You can't bully roam anymore. Mm -hmm. Definitely cannot step up to the creep wave. And you can see that Claire knows that. Being pretty respectful. If those double shurikens hit, that's it. He comes back in and slices. Uh, instant lane swap from Legacy. So they're trying to do what the Chiefs did, which is avoid this Rennington. Yep. Except it's a Fizz that's trying to avoid a Rennington, which doesn't make too much sense. Which is the opposite of what happened. Ooh. People are trying to avoid flares <laughs> at the moment. And I blame them. You can see full creep wave going to be pushed in here. They're really desperate for that first brick. Huh. Thought that potentially Sim would have just stuck around for that one because now there's four people down there Why? rotating juves across. So I can understand the swap, but they brought Tally down as well. Yeah. Are they just trying to rush first brick? Yeah, that's what I was saying. They're just going to try and rush first brick, which is it. why I thought Sin would have stayed with the top lane turret push. And all of a sudden, there's nothing they can do because they've even brought a fifth member down in Claire mm. just to guarantee... That first objective. Does that mean that Tally now has to blow teleport to get top? I mean, I, there's a big wave pushing against it. He's I don't think he needs to. Sitting bottom, so that would mean Eddie carrying support will come back to top lane. You gotta be careful though. Loss has gone back to base. Cupcake's still there. Will eventually recall. Triple Tricks to gets him nice and okay as Flares continues to push top lane turret. Just want to let everyone know, a little bit of a graphical error. Had the wrong Keystone Mastery, so it is a Deathfire touch right. on FBI. Just letting everyone know. Uh, fish being used there by Tally, just to clear out the way. Yep. That's desperate. Top lane turret's almost falling as well. Flares will go back to base, and Sin will continue pushing to equalize Flares turrets. didn't actually push for that turret, so maybe could have shoved up the wave and got it. This means that... Bottom lane turret will go down, but probably going to have to be a swap to defend top lane again. Oh, they've got to be careful. FBI is going to be in trouble if Juice doesn't. Yeah, Juice stays. So if Juice went back to base, Tally was just going to jump all over FBI. And despite being the same level as him, it's still a fizz against a Jin. Oh, Claire is so wary of Ryoma right now. You can see that Ryoma postures aggressively forward. Claire's still doing well on the CS. Oh, Carbon's found him back. Does he kick him back? Yes, he does. Lots of damage. Pops the death mark on top of Claire. And Carbon just goes over the ball. Easy execution from the jungle. Great play out of Carbon there, actually. Stays with the play. Doesn't allow, uh, They kill him quickly enough that doesn't allow him to go back to his shadow over the wall either. So very top-notch lease in play out of Carbon there. 3-1-2, and two, having another very good performance. 
Now, now picking out Carbon, though. Ooh, they're trying to cash them out. Rogue does have ultimate available. They've got to be careful of this one. Carbon lands a shot on towards Juice, who decides not to follow up, but Claire is rotating up here. Legacy trying to push their turret advantage. Yes, the Fizz might be low, but the rest of them out Teleport winning. Teleport coming in. Here we go. Oh, this is going to be a five on three. Rogue and Flair stuck in the turret. They're trying to lock him down. Good ultimate from Rogue. He's going to be the first to four. Ultimate comes out from Juice. Gives him a big shield, but he's tanking up nothing in this lane. It's all Flair's and the rest of the team. Kernicle comes out. Lost tanks one. Cupcake stands in front of the rest. Does the fourth shot. Bandit doesn't. Cupcake will live. Tally's now the one that falls. Rhymer gets that kill. Legacy got a run. Captive audience doesn't lock anyone down, just gets a bit of extra damage, and that's a two-for-one trade going in favor of Legacy. Yeah, so really nicely done from Legacy. Again, they actually active, uh, they make an active use of their teleport, able to get up there because they're ganking flares. No teleport is going to be available to try and help him out. Ooh. And Sin, unfortunately, they sent uh, FBI mid lane, so just one step behind. Mm -hmm. But still, defending that turret dive and a teleport, only losing one kill. Carbon still impressive. has kick as well, and you can see that Ryoma kind of has an inkling that that's the case because they're sticking around to defend this turret. FBI is getting some chip damage in the mid lane inner, or out, I should say. The gym picks around the curious. We haven't seen him for some time. He's going for Yomu's first. Yeah, I think it's going to be Yomu's into IE, which was a really old school gym build. Of course, Jin uses uh, IE better than most AD carries, uh, just as the item itself, because he has guaranteed four shot. So as long as you get one other on top of it, uh, really does help him out. So Rhyma will take down top lane, out of for himself, gets all the gold as well. Two, one, and one. It's going to be a split pushing monster. Yeah, they have a couple of them, but Tally being able to pick up a couple of kills, even though he has five deaths, means that he potentially can still go toe to toe. More Malmordius picked up by Flares, though. That's an aggressive yeah, item. Yeah, another rush out of it. Ooh, Ryoma might be able to catch out Claire if he's going to stay there any longer. But Arrow thrown. They actually see the Zed. Dodges it. Nicely done. The Blast cone his way out as well. Pillar does nothing. Tries to interrupt at mid-jump. Yep. But good fancy feet from uh, Ryoma. Certainly was. And Ryoma going to uh, stay up top lane. Continue that pressure onto Claire. Uh, who he has right where he wants. I mean, going towards... Oh, he's just having a chuckle. Uh, <laughs> going towards that perfect hack saw. But had to stop uh, for the arm guard. Which, you know, as a victor, you really don't want to stop for anything at the start of the game. So Sinner tied with Lacey in gold now. Although it was a very decisive early game lead for Flares. Yep. I mean, Tally really has clawed that one back. 3-5-3 and three after... You know, tying solo twice and being turreted over at level four. Pretty impressive out of Tally. But going for full tank on Fizz, not going for Trinity Force or Blade of the Rock here. Do you have to once you fall behind? Can you still afford to pick up a Trinity Force? I mean, eventually I'm sure he would like the item. Otherwise, does he even outscale really? I'm not so sure. I know that Pabu played a game for Fizz and went full tank. He made a couple of really rookie errors that game as well. Diving without a knight available. Uh, for now, Flair's going to continue pushing up this wave. Waiting quite some time. <laughs> Flair's just waiting. Uh, decides not to do anything proactive. Juice is in the back pocket of Flair's. Claire has to be careful. You can just flash on him right now. Oh, he's going. That's the chaos. That's the gravity field being used. So Flair's can just dart around it. Ultimate gets thrown as oh. well. Juice throws the ultimate in the wrong direction. Flair will burn his flash. So they still get the summoner spell from the victor. Yep. Not the heal, just the flash. Uh-oh. Ryan is topside. Tally. Uh, but uh, Carbon's here. Yep. There's the shark being used. Tries to jump away. Will get knocked up. Tagged. Oh! Avoids it. Can he still get a kill? No, he can't. Carbon picks up that kill. And uses absolutely everything there. Uses the ultimate. Actually, didn't use summoner spell. I thought he used flash at the very end. But nicely done there from Ryoma. He knows he's going to die, so he just falls down peacefully. But at the same time, Legacy is starting to pick up the tempo of this game. They're rotating around and getting some good picks. Juve mis-executes on his gang. Carbon nails his. Sin still looking for bottom lane inner. So they'll trade an outer for an inner turret, which is not too bad. I mean, the one kill on top of it yep. doesn't make it a great trade. And they're about a thousand gold behind Legacy. Legacy holding on to an early lead. Carbon is having a good game again, 4-1-4. Four, and four has stepped up in the last two games, Carbon, and he needed to for his team. As I said, he's the one that has been in this position so many times. He's two levels above Juves, who is 2-1-4. Yeah, well. I mean, he's still farming. 
We already mentioned this about Juve's playstyle, but he does sit in lanes for a very long time. Doesn't really farm all that much. FBI's picked up a BS sword for himself, so that should be the Infinity Edge you were talking about. Blade of the Ruin King, though, already picked up by Lost. That's a big spike for the Ash. And Tally is now working towards his Trinity Force, so just the first item. Going for a little bit more tanky stats. Makes sense. I mean, the triple strike that comes out of Renekton really does hurt if you don't have tabbies. And then uh, Sunfire Cape just gives you a little bit more survivability. Mm -hmm. You're going to get it anyway. He just builds it out of order to make sure that he can still go with him during the early game. And during the mid game, going to have a reasonable spike still at two items. Obviously not optimal, but if you set that far behind, you have to respect your opponent and build tank. So does Sin continue their 1-3-1? One, one? Do they just park any carry and support mid lane, have Jews rotating around and players and Roma split pushing? I mean, I don't think they actually have any other game plan here. Uh, there's no real other way to be able to play this one. That is very scary. When, you, when you're stuck behind a pillar and there's an Ash on the other team. Yep. If an arrow flies out and suddenly Carver's in your face, you're dead. Exactly right. And all of a sudden, you can see the carving collapsing on Ryoma one more time. Flares there as well. Who's collapsing on who? Oh, it seems like Ryoma's found his mark here as he gets jumped on. There's oh. a body bomb. Big one from Juice. Will get locked down by the gravity field. Flares is trying to dash on in. Knocks Claire back. No more flash available for this man and Sin. Get the pick they were looking for. Huge ultimate out of Juice, as well as a body slam flash combo. You can see that this time Ryoma has to use everything FBI that's said. Our FBI are going to get locked down. Flashes over the pillar. Might live for a little bit longer, but that's a flash from Cupcake. Tags Rogue with the thing. And Carver will get locked down, but no turret aggro being picked up by Legacy's captain. That's actually really poor play out of FBI. Oh, Tally's going to try and look to go in here. Well, they're just going to keep going because all of a sudden they've got the collapse and Tally nails a fish. Yep. Players will be knocked up, slowed down slightly, but Juves is protecting him. Good body bop gives him a shield and knocks them back. Legacy still working on outer turrets as Lost and Cupcake slowly take down this lane. Ryoma is waiting in the wings, no ultimate available for the Zed. Carbon is low. Cupcake and Lost, gotta be careful here. So, uh, FBI still burns both summoner spells, but he burns them after he got hit by the arrow and then still falls down. I feel like if you flash that arrow, you actually live then you have a good trade going for your team. Cupcake just stands up to the crocodile and says, I can fight you. Come at me. Exactly right. You what can see that his ultimate it's... still strips away resistances, does everything that made Trundle support very annoying to begin with. Also makes him quite tanky. Tally's caught in up. In the late though. game. Tally's only 10 CS behind this Rannikton. No, Tally's completely fine. He's 80 gold down. Oof. Carbon's a thousand ahead in the jungle. Mid lane is about 600 in Claire's favor. And the 80 carries, it's a thousand going towards loss. So, with a thousand, a cupcake again. This guy's outclassing Rogue in terms of gold picked up. But Legacy is sitting very comfortable. 2,500 gold up. Yeah, I don't know whether really your job as a support is to pick up more gold, though. I mean, he's definitely lifted in the last game, I would say, uh, Cupcake. And he's had a pretty good early game here. But I would still say that Rogue has been uh, pretty phenomenal so far. Big oh, flanks coming middle. out in the mid lane. Cena looking for a fight mid lane. There's the critical trying to start this one. Cupcake slowed down. He's trying to sacrifice himself. Pops the ultimate on towards flares. He's going to lose a lot of resistances. Cupcake's just so tanky. They lock him down with everything and he's still not dead. Lost. There's loss. We'll get locked down for a while, but the pillar's going to stop the ultimate of Malzahar. He's the one that's in trouble. Exhaust goes on towards Tally, but he's on top of FBI. The Jin is just sit watching as the Fizz collapses. And the flank coming out from Sin, that means nothing to Trundle. Exactly right. Trundle was just so damn tanky in that back line and was able to withstand all the damage and loss. Actually, how did he get out of it? It looked like it was QSS. It was off. the pillar coming out from Cupcake. So Cupcake able to nail the pillar, which is why you probably should have focused the Trundle. FBI not having a good game on Jin at all. He's not. Probably should have been an Ash priority again, Addison. They took the Renekton instead. And whilst Flares had a good laning phase, uh, since then Tally's taken over. He has. They weren't able to keep the Fizz shut down like they have when they've got the champion. And Legacy, this team comp is a miracle one. Cupcake's fantastic on this champion. Yeah, it certainly is. I mean, you can just see how confident he's playing. Able to step forward. As you said, that ultimate just does so much. You don't really want to throw all that much into a support. Let's have a look at it. You can see he turns around ult. And they're kind of hitting him with everything. Locket's there still. And this is where you probably should just ult Cupcake back into your team. But instead, as you said, doesn't happen. 
in the end. It's very, very late, Ryan, and not able to get in anywhere because Carbon's just zoning him away. And Tally sticks with the play, able to pick up the easy kill onto FBI. And uh, honestly, if you're going to hit Cupcake, you should burn him. If not, just ignore him completely. So what does Sin do now? Because Legacy, 5,000 gold up. It's not like last game with the 5,000... Stupid croc. 5,000 gold didn't matter. This time around, it's a massively I mean, Legacy. this is desperation right now. You can see that they're sending two people into the bottom lane, That's which is a very risky play. Both their split pushes into the bottom lane as well. Because Claire, all of a sudden, 203 CS, has picked himself up. That Zonya's Hourglass. Not really all that worried about either Flares or Ryoma. Although, if no one shows up, Ryoma still potentially kills him. Carver looking to try and catch out Ryoma, who's moving top side of the map to pick up this or wave. Or potentially a face checking Rogue slash Juves. And Juves, now they're behind you, mate. You're He's dead. Caught. Everyone just piles in on the Gragas, and Carbon gets a kill. They're looking to try and tie this one to bring us the game five spot. Exactly right. This has been such a clean legacy victory after. What was a shaky laning phase up in the top lane? You can see that Carbon wants this Baron. They've already called the teleport in. Can you really stop it without Juves here? I mean, they're just so far away. Even without Juves, how do you contest just one on four? Colonel Cole gets thrown now, looking to try and go for it. Ryoma can't get in there. There is suppression from Rogue, but he's not close enough. And now your Malzahar is probably dead. Jumped on with the pillar and everything. That's a kill picked up by Legacy and Baron just 24 minutes into this one. And this has been very one-sided. I mean, as one-sided as game one was for Sin, now it looks like Legacy have finally turned up the heat. This is probably the team everyone expected to come into this, and they're going to push for the base. With Ryama top lane, I actually don't know if you can stop this. Legacy looking for the first inhibitor of the game. Carver jumping out on top of Juice. He's going to take some damage. FBI, FBI, he's dead. That's a fierce on top of you. This is why the champions banned out. Flares. Going to try and dart backwards. He's going to use the ultimate to knock everyone out, but Tally is going to be able to pick up a double. Looking for the triple kill. Ryama trying to do everything he can as the assassin. Jumps on the Tally after picking up one. Flashes away. Deathmark's going to pop. Ignite is not going to be enough because Lost heals up his allies. And only Rogue is left up for the side of Seed. Legacy are destroying them one by one, and this could potentially be game spawn. It certainly will be. I mean, they're so long on the death timers, and they still have the Baron buff. FBI will be coming back available in four seconds, but he's against four members. Legacy looking to close this one out. Let's see if they can do it. FBI's up. Eight seconds on Juice and nine seconds on Flares. They're trying to take down that last Nexus turret, but they might decide to peel off here. Malzahar got a road kill on towards Fizz. And Sin do defend their turret. Yeah, so they're going to have to back away from that one as Tally was taken down. Flares now on the back line. Oh, that's a flank. Lost going to take so much damage here. Rogue is pummeling him with the red buff. Claire will take down the crocodile. But Sin still get a kill for themselves. Curtain call. Does he get Claire? Finds him. Cupcake now in trouble. In big trouble. That's a red buff. Captive audience is able to lock him down. He's silenced and he's slowed. And there's a big man with a barrel coming in. Carbon jumps in. Gets a kill onto Rogue. Can he do anything more though, Spawn? He can potentially pick up FBI. Carbon's a man possessed. Jumps in, locks him down, gets clubbed by the man with the club. And Juves now has to run for his life. Two members left inside of Sin. Ryoma, nowhere to be seen. Does he come back in for this? And Carbon is very confident right now. You oh. can see, actually taunting a little bit. Hello, that's a Zed. You should stop taunting, my friend. Jumps over towards the Raptor pit, gets out of there. Like. I mean, he's absolutely fine. Carbon, 8, 2, and 9, has the GA as well as a dead man's plate. Wasn't it? Any real danger there, Fish. And you can see Ryoma still working his way to level 16. It is 9,000 gold. And this isn't a control mage comp. There's no real way you can stall this one out. We're not talking about a Vlad flying into the back line. This game becomes very difficult for Sin to win. It does, especially now Tally's two levels above Flares. Yep. Somehow. And 13k. Uh, sorry, 3,000 gold. 13k? Yeah, 13k. 30,000 gold above. He doesn't even have that much money. Yeah, exactly. He's 2,500 <laughs> gold up right now. Rogue's in trouble. Yeah, he's all right. Got the really annoying build of the Rylai's Crystal Scepter at this stage of the game. You can see going towards what looks to be a haunting guys into Burning Face. Oh, got they Cupcake that potentially. Cupcake. Did they kill him first? They bumped him. That's a kill already. And now Tally's the one that's being focused down. Arrow connects up to Juice. Dominus popped by Flares. He oh. gets the ball, but FBI is deleted. He's gone for Dominus Rift. And the rest of the city are about to follow. And this is why the priority on Victor still exists because Flair just, Flair just flashes forward and absolutely annihilates Here him. Here comes Ryoma looking for some kills for himself. We'll take down the midliner. 
Well, three members of Legacy left up. They're moving in towards the Nexus. Yeah, and Claire doesn't care. It's not about getting the personal stats. It's about winning the game. And Legacy have done that. They're going to take down Sin and take us to game number four. The first gauntlet in the OVL. And Legacy are going to tie this one back up. They've done it again, Spawn. Every single game in this gauntlet goes straight to game five. Never change Oceanic League of Legends. Five Ooh. games each day for three days. And you can see that Carbon is all fired up. He wants to be in that final. He wants it so bad. Well, they said it. Anything that is not first place is a disappointment. And uh, he just said he refuses to lose. That's exactly what he said as he walked past the room. Uh, so from his attitude right now, certainly looks to be the case fish and sin they had such an early lead there in that match and they dropped the ball yeah exactly right i mean did they drop the ball or did like carbon wrestle it away from him what did Probably. he finish nine two seven or something like that on lee sin he was absolutely going berserk yeah. i mean fantastic game out of the captain of legacy yep the captain was a man possessed in that match and we're gonna go into game five is he in the time time on your screen over there 14 minutes before we get into that final match of this gauntlet to decide who goes into the finals against the diewolves but for now to break down that game let's throw it back to the analyst desk thank you fish thank you spawn there we have a legacy tongue up the series two wall all right, EJ, I mean, you've been in this scenario less than 24 hours ago. So, I mean, if you're legacy right now, how are you feeling? Bloody good. Yeah? Feeling very good. Yeah, I think actually there was a tweet I read in just before the game started by Choo Choo's yeah. old legacy player, obviously. Yeah. And he really like hit the nail on the head when he said like the third game swing is actually just like the biggest thing. When you're down 2-0 and then you win that third game in like a best of five series, like as Jake said, I don't know if they could hear on the broadcast, Tim is just screaming as he yeah. walks past. I refuse to lose whatever. Like that is the moment where you're pumped up and it just carried through this game. Mm -hmm. And now I said momentum was a thing yeah. for Sin. They really <laughs> bloody dropped it now. It's all in Legacy's court. <laughs> yeah, Jish, how do you feel about momentum now? Is it swinging back or is it? does this fickle momentum suggest that it maybe doesn't exist the way you said at the start? Um, I think it's probably... It's a, it's a nice little story to, to spin to be like, oh, momentum shifting mm. and stuff. I honestly think Legacy are just cleaning up a little bit. Mm. Um, I think Carbon's warmed up the old man fingers a little bit. And he's definitely coming out to play <laughs> the, in this. Uh, the arthritic joints are Yeah, he's coming out to play in game four. So I think it's it's definitely, it's more to do, I think, with um, Legacy are, are really good at best of fives. Obviously, had a lot yeah. of experience um, losing them in the past. Mm. So they, they know how to adapt. And Many sort of those best of fives didn't go to five games, though. So Yeah, yeah I mean, yeah. I think I still give them the favorite, I, I guess, in best of series. Um, yeah. And a, a, an adaptation in itself, yeah, it's mm. definitely a strength of theirs. So I just want to say, Sin have won two best of fives quite recently now, right now. Mm. I did say it was going to go to series five. I'm pretty sure right now, Juves is exceptional when it comes to rallying the troops. So this, this guy, <laughs> so he knows how to bring everyone back so around. So if you didn't watch yesterday, apparently, according to Juves, what happened was he went into the bathroom between game four and five. So the series, they go ahead two games, then Chiefs tied up two all. Juves goes to the bathroom. And then while he's in the bathroom, he says, he looked in the mirror and he had an epiphany. He's like, I've been here before. And we won this, boys. And apparently then he just walks back into the team room <laughs> and explains to the guys, like, Guys, what are you... No, we've been here before. We actually win this. And everyone's like, what are you talking about? <laughs> so I'm saying... I mean, it works. Is he, yeah, is he, is he out of epiphanies? Like, I mean, <laughs> how many visits from angels can one man have? Like, if, surely, surely at this point, surely at this point, exhaustion is coming in. But anyway, look, let's move on. Let's take a look at the, uh, the draft, shall we? Because uh, I know you're a big fan of the Trinal in support. Yeah. And uh, you're... Yeah, you, we want to talk about that for a bit? Yeah, I can talk about that for bloody days, to be honest. Now, Trundle... Very interesting. I think it's something Cupcake's just been playing a lot recently. Cinema running around in solo queue, pillaring people. Um, and it's into the Malzahar and into the Jin. Like, Jin very immobile. I don't think he's very good right now. I'm not mm. really sure why Sin were prioritizing it. Um, <clears throat> loses most pushes to Caitlyn, Ash, mm. Varus, blah, 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 right? But and Caitlyn was still up as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And Sin have seemed to favor the Caitlyn in the past. Yeah. Um, so I, that was confusing for me, I guess. Uh, not sure where that came from. But the Trundle um, worked incredibly well because Sin also picked the full AD lineup. So Trundle, tank mm. support, can build Frozen Heart, tons of armor. And he's just really good at denying, like... A, the Malzahar ulti, and he's just, like, like when Malzahar sets up, he ulti's your AD carry, you just pillar him out of it. You saw it in the mid-fight uh, during the game. Um, but the big thing is, Jish kind of mentioned upstairs, he's kind of just like a, a weird thresh in that, like, mm. you pick the Trundle, but he will just naturally lose to the Malzahar because you can't just run at a Malzahar. He's, he's like, Voidlings will just, they'll just mess you up, right? They'll ruin your day. But they just gang for it early. You just pillar behind them, blow the flash, like, they just die. Like, as he did that really well. They burn the summoners, and then so the Trundle lane gets priority, and then they flip that. When Tally, Tally got solo killed at level one in the top lane, right? Yep. 
awful, like, that is horrendous for him, especially into a player like Flares and also in that matchup like Fizz and Ecton. Like, it's pretty snowbally, right? So they snowball their bot advantage with the Trundle. They gank it early, take a top side, take the turret, and that was a really good play by them. Mm. Yeah, the early lane swap was a really good choice to, re to come through because they said, you know what? We need to stop the bleeding in that top lane immediately. Mm. Flares, we do not want a repeat of him just absolutely popping off and taking the game and then basically winning it for sin. So for them to make that move was intelligent. I also like the Trundle pick because what it also brings is the fact that you've got a double front line in that sin lineup. So that means that he's got two targets to put his ultimate on, basically make himself unkillable in, in the middle of any team fight. Yep. All right. Well, let's move again from the draft into the game. And Mendrix, there's a game-changing moment you want to talk about, uh, which kind of was a legacy uh, turning things around and for the first time taking control of the game. That's right. So this is really the big, the big moment when they actually have it. And for some reason, Sin are throwing everything onto Cupcake. He immediately uses his ultimate straight onto Flares. That means he's just drawing all of his armor, drawing all of his HP to stay alive there. That pillar there is also an exceptional pillar as well, really just allowing him to get, allowing them to get that target priority straight onto Rogue. And really at that point, Sin have nothing left to re-engage with. They ha either have to scramble away and Legacy pounce. And from that point, they have control of the game. Mm. Okay, so, <laughs> I mean, look, this series is now tied up to all, right? We've seen both teams play well. We've seen both teams make a lot of mistakes. So going into game five then, Jish, what is the big thing for each team that you want to see them clean up? I mean, I think I, I just touched on it earlier. Mm -hmm. I think Carbon really stepped up this game. Um, you know, he, as Bryce mentioned, uh, he came down bot for a really good uh, early uh, gank on bot lane, and they mm -hmm. turned that into going top side. Um, he then bailed Tally out of a 1v1 against Ryoma. Uh, and then he had some like good, decent kicks, like engaging, saving people. Um, so I think Carbon really needs to keep firing on all cylinders and to go into game sin? five. And I guess for Sin, it's trying to find that form and that confidence had in the early games. Um, when they were picking those really sort of aggressive early game ganking junglers, um, I think the, the Elise was really good for them. I think maybe trying to go back to that and snowballing their solo laners uh, and play it from that. Do you, do you agree? Uh, yeah. Bryce, you want to see some more Elise? Yeah. Juju's been playing a lot of Elise lately. I'd like yeah. to see him back on that. And I think, yeah, the first two games, they were just playing hyper aggressive early. Juju's was looking for ganks, even like if it was uh, pretty risky or whatever, but like that's the style they were going for and that was what was working for them. So I want to see them go back to that, yeah. And finally, Mendrix, do you, do, is there anything in particular that, that you want to see Sin improve going to Game 5, given that you did say they would win this 3-2? So your, yours Oof. is the only prediction on this that could possibly still come through. <laughs> I would like to see them actually ban away Lee Sin or even take it because the big thing is Carver's now played quite a few games on it. I guess you could say, you know, maybe the, the old hands have warmed up and they've been they've actually acclimatized perfectly. How old, how old is Kyle? He's like 25, right? He's not like... Ancient, yeah. basically. <laughs> he's ancient. In, 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 in Game of Turns, in Game of Turns. But the big thing about it is he's actually acclimatized to that champion. He's mm. basically popping on all four, four cylinders now. I'd like them to say, you know what, let's just get him onto something he's not comfortable with anymore. Mm. All right, well, speaking of Father Time himself, let's take a look at Carbon's uh, old hands. Because in that most recent game, you, like you said, Jish, the first game he really popped off and uh, doing, what, a fifth of his team's damage. But that kill participation, 80%, is very high. Yeah, the kill participation is what like, is really standing out. Um, obviously, he was just all around the map uh, covering for any weaknesses or like stopping where the, like, uh, stemming the, like, the blood flow, sorry. Um, I think, I, think, yeah. I think the interesting thing about that, uh, the damage dealt is that he just built like five armor items in a row because he was resting full AD comp and he's still doing that much damage. Like, you know he's doing something right if like 20% of your damage is not full AD least in. Yeah, Carbon is actually a firm believer in when you're ahead, just continue building defensively because at that point you go, especially with Lee Sin, you get, you're still going to get some natural AD as time goes on with your levels. And he seems to go, you can make those miracle plays. You can start to really pop off when you're building full defensive, and he just was in his element at that point in time. And I mean, at 20 minutes, he had almost close to a 90% kill participation. For him to keep that up throughout the game was impressive. Yeah, me and uh, Ejim were noticing that there was actually this team fight where Ryoma was like 1v1 in carbon, and like he just refused to ult. Like there was no way he was using his ult on like a three, uh, three armor Dead item. Yeah, like, yeah. <laughs> that was doing no damage. So it was just like got zoned out of the fight and did nothing. Yeah. So then in terms of the picks and bans going into game five then, if Sin do bane out Lee Sin, do they leave Ivan open and then just Carbon gets Ooh. his tree? Nah. So then nah, you've got it. Definitely not. I think they still ban the Ivan. They'd be banning it whole series. Yeah. Um, I'm interested. Who has side selects in this game? Uh, game? Well, it's being decided now. Okay. Yeah. Well, yeah, it'd be interesting to see like what the sides are because that's played mm -hmm. a pretty big part, I think. Um, I think they can afford to drop their Ori ban and give that back to like put that back to Lee Sin. Yeah. Uh -huh. um, yeah, first been so It's just been told uh, Legacy has chosen blue side this round in game five. Okay. So that means uh, Sin will be back on red like they were in that game. Yeah. So does that affect your calculations? I don't know. I agree with Jish, though. 
Oriana first ban. Well, I'm, I mean, Especially like, yeah, you're talking about the Ivan ban. I think they stick to the Ivan ban. Yep. Braun ban the entire series. I think the Ori is, like, unnecessary. Yeah, I think right. if you're giving... I mean, they saved the counter pick for Ryoma that game, and he had, yeah. like, a really good early game. He's, like, basically solo killed with a slight help of Jeeves yep. um, at level 6 sort of thing. So I think if they're getting him a good matchup, um, you can leave open the Oriana. Like, there are answers to it. Okay. So I guess it's just, like, on to Ryoma to figure out what he wants. Hendrix, do you have any thoughts on the draft going into game five? Because, you know, this is for all the marbles. Well, I do. By which I mean, it's the chance to play Die Wolves. <laughs> I do like the idea of that, you know, continue to put some priority onto Ryoma if you can, also Flares, because clearly he did pop off last game as well in that early moment. And if he's able to do that without being completely run over again by the rest of the legacy side, it could actually paint something very different. Because, I mean, you know, it's game five now. We've seen Flares do it twice already. So I think there really needs to be this point in time where they go, let's see if we can pull out another miracle. Well, and then for Legacy, right? We've just seen them pull out this Trundle support uh, into Malzahar. So that's kind of like a, a thing we hadn't seen them mm. apply in this, uh, or, or earlier in the split, right? But for Sin, I mean, they've shown everything right now, right? Oh, Unless I mean, they've, they've got played, some... Yeah, yeah, three best of five. They've played, well, they're up to game 14, right? Yeah, now. So yeah. it's not like they've got like some secret, oh, well, talent top or something. You know what I mean? Like, they're yeah. not, you know, they've got, they've got no secrets left. I feel like if you're climbing, like, that far up the gauntlet, like, yeah. you don't really have any options in terms of hiding strategies, right? But um, you mentioned, like, the Legacy and the Trondle. Yeah. Legacy are actually kind of... I, like, I, it just kind of triggered in my mind when you said that, though. I really respect their ability to, like, come up with these niche things. Mm. Like, and I guess it, it, it it's probably just on Cupcake, because this is now the Trondle into, like, the Malzahar Jin. Um, that's something you're not seeing being played around the world, but Legacy, obviously, are practiced with it, and they have a lot of trust in Cupcake, and he's done well on it. And also, like, earlier in the split with the brand, um, when Ivan <laughs> was running around before it was banned every single game, yeah. um, when other teams were picking Ivan, they just somehow out of the blue decided that brand was, like, the answer <laughs> to Ivan. Because as soon as he throws the root caller, yeah. he does that, like, woo! Whatever. But also, like, five burns <laughs> down trees, obviously. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's no. clearly the logic behind no, it. No, but it's like, yeah, Ivan lands, like, a Q, and then everyone takes the Q onto the target and yeah. just, like, stacks up, and then brand just gets, like, a monster Mate, combo. It's just, it's just the Os way, right? Like, yeah. the, clearly the way you take down a forest is with a bush fight. That is clearly absolutely. <laughs> but then, but but then you say in terms of niche picks, especially with Cupcake, that yeah. Braum ban, right? So they can't yeah. do that Braum Lucian combo in the bot lane. Yeah, he's really annoying. <laughs> he's, just a, he's just an annoying player. Look at him. Look at him. <laughs> yeah, look, he's on my screen. Like I'm just angry because he doesn't have to buy pinks, and then he does more damage than me, and he has more gold because he doesn't spend it on pinks, and he gets to play Trundle, Braum, and bloody Brand. <laughs> I played five games of Lulu. <laughs> did you have this kind of flexibility when you played for uh, when you played for Legacy, or you just playing? I think that? I did actually. Oh, did you? I got to play Alley and Thresh. You every played Alley and Thresh yeah. every game. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All right, so let's get some final thoughts uh, for for the team that you've picked going in to win this uh, this fifth game. Let's do final predictions, and then I also want to know uh, what you are looking forward to seeing from this team going into Game Five. So, Bryce, let me start with you. I want Legacy to win. Okay. This whole time, when Sin <laughs> were 2-0 up, I was just like, how are we in this position? How has Sin made this miracle run up the gauntlet into like the 2-0 Legacy? But I think the momentum has swung. Mm -hmm. I think Legacy, uh, that game was a lot cleaner than the game before. Yeah. I think they've obviously recognized where they were going wrong and they're fixing up a bunch of that stuff. They're just, I guess, to use Jish's terminology, whenever we went overseas and faced all these different teams, it was just like a, you had a short period to just band-aid all your problems. And that's yeah. what they're doing. They're just, mm. in this series, as time progresses, they're just band-aiding all their problems. Um, and I think they're slowly just, yeah, they've got the momentum back and they're fixing it. And I think they're going to come out on top. Yeah, Jish. I guess credit to uh, Soul Strikes for patching up their leaking ship on the way to shore <laughs> sort of thing. Um, yeah, I think that they are sort of working out what wasn't working I guess in the first two games, um, and they've just started tidying up the game a little bit. Uh, and Sin, I guess, as we just said, like they're they're all out of options at this yeah. point. Their fifteenth game, um, Whoa, if they have if they have days. a pocket pick now, I'll be so <laughs> impressed. And they just deserve to win based on that. <laughs> <laughs> Mendrix, final thoughts. I like to I like them to just reset, do what they do typically um, in terms of them going to those game fives. And I think they do have the ability to take it back. That dark horse factor is always there. All right. Well, there we have it. This is for all of the marbles. The winner of this will go on to play Die Wolves next week, 5 p.m. Sunday here at the OPL. But there is still one last hurdle for both Sin and Legacy. So we'll leave you with our casters. Before that, let's check out some highlights from Game 4. Thanks so much, Dash. Oh. He's almost dead. Flares! Gets first blood in the top lane. Take that, you Fizz monster. It juves is in the back. Ooh, FBI. Oh, they're jumping FBI. He's kicked back. Rogue flashes over. Only lost down Lost, but he's not taking up the turret. And they split the team. Loss going to go down to Rogue. But Carver's in the back lines again. Will he fall to the turret? Yes, he will. Good ultimate from Rogue. He's meter first to four. Ultimate comes out from Juice. Gives us a big shield. But he's taking up nothing in this lane. It's all Flares and the rest of the team. Kernicor comes out. Lost takes one. Cupcake stands in front of the rest. Does the four shot. Bend it. Does it. 
Cupcake will live. Tally's now the one that falls. Ryama gets that kill. Legacy got to run. So buffs the ultimate on towards Flares. He's going to lose a lot of resistances. Cupcake's just so tanky. They lock him down with everything, and he's still not dead. Lost. There's Loss. We'll get locked out for a while, but the pillar's going to stop the ultimate of Malzahar. He's the one that's in trouble. Exhaust goes on towards Tally, but he's on top of FBI. The Jin is just sitting, watching as the Fizz collapses. It's banned out. Flares gonna try and dart backwards. He's gonna use the ultimate to knock everyone out, but Tally is gonna be able to pick up a double, looking for the triple kill. Ryama trying to do everything he can as the assassin, jumps on the Tally after picking up one, flashes away, Death Mark's gonna pop. Ignite is not gonna be enough because Lost heals up his allies, and only Rogue is left up for the side of Seed. Legacy are destroying them one by one, and this could potentially be game spawn. Cupcake now in trouble. In big trouble, that's a red buff. Captive audience is able to lock him down. He's silenced and he's slowed and there's a big man with a barrel coming in. Kaba jumps in, gets a kill onto Rogue. Can he do anything more though? Arrow connects up the Jews. Dominus popped by Flares. He oh. gets the ball, but FBI is deleted. He's gone for Summoner's Rift. And the rest of Sin are about to follow. They're gonna take down Sin and take us to game number four. The first gauntlet in the OVL and Legacy are gonna tie this one back up. They've done it against Spawn. Every single game in this gauntlet goes straight to game five.